Hi students, I hope you're doing well. Um, I am super eager as we are finishing our third and final essay, the argumentative essay. Um, it's hard to believe that we are already here, that we are really coming towards the end of the semester. A lot of you gave some really good feedback and talked about how helpful it was uh, for me to do this last time when I went through an example essay of a student who received an A. Um, on the compare and contrast. So I wanted to do that again with the argumentative essay in hopes that it will help you um, as you finish up those final touches and submit your essay um, by the end of this week. Please make sure that you take a look at the due dates as I've changed some of those to ensure that you have enough time. Um, I got a little behind on leaving feedback. Uh, we had a busier weekend than I anticipated. And so I wanted to ensure you had adequate time to take my notes and your peers notes and really apply those ideas. So let's just go through uh, some basic principles. First of all, the student did a really great job of uh, their MLA format. Um, the only thing I would comment on is they didn't do instructor Logan Dupree or Mrs. Logan Dupree, but you see they have their top right header. They have their left hand side header with their name, my name, the course name and the date. And then they have a really creative title. And as you can see, everything is in Times New Roman double space with proper indentions and margins. So this is an argumentative essay just as you're submitting this week. Beethoven, Mozart, The Beatles, Elvis, Van Gogh, Da Vinci, Picasso, O'Keeffe, Hendrix, Aretha Franklin, Madonna, Dolly, and Johnny Depp are all names that bring visual and musical ideas to the mind. These heroes of the art world, whether in music, art, dance, or drama, were dramatically affected by their studies in the art field and transversely affected the world. Creativity is, needed, is a needed tool in all areas of achievement and growth in the world. Through music, art, dance, and drama, individuals are given the opportunity to express themselves. Funding to these art fields and schools needs to be addressed to help st encourage students to be creative and innovative. Art education is incredibly important to the development of students because it can cause them to become more aware of social and political issues, improve their cognitive abilities, and potentially improve their financial standings. Let's talk about this introduction. First and foremost, there's a really good hook right here where the author introduces some names of some really great artists, probably some of which you're familiar with. He also does a really good job of transitioning this hook to the thesis statement. He relates the hook to how this is going to defend his argument. And then here at the very end, we see a very clear thesis statement and he even outlines some of the ideas that he's gonna be talking about in this essay. Art education classes offers different media to help students grasp the complexity of society that is different from the historical or scientific data taught in other classes. One thing I want you to see is that this is a clear topic sentence. He doesn't go into examples. He doesn't use um, research. He goes into the topic and this topic matches the very first topic that he introduced in his thesis statement. The arts can provide students the ability to look at the world around them more critically through studying artwork or music. A relevant example of this is Pablo Picasso's painting Guernica, which was painted in response to the bombing of the town Guernica in Spain. And then you can see that he gives you an in-text citation, which in this case is the author's name. We're gonna be talking more about the works cited page at the end of, um, at the end of this lecture. This painting not only brought, a wide, brought widespread public attention to the Spanish Civil War, but also inspired many to give money to relief funds. And again, you can see he got that, uh, he got this information from another source. Through Picasso's illustration, the world not only gave money, but showed compassion for the aftermath of war. A more modern example of art that helped spark social change and helped bring awareness to social issues include Bansky's nativity scene at the Israel-Palestine border, which brought much more news coverage to the situation. And then in this case, he uses the title for an in-text citation, and I'll share why when we get to the end. 
by creating an iconic image on the controversial border helped turn the audience's eye on the conflicts and attacks between two religious sects in Israel. An important example was Jimi Hendrix's rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, which was one of the most political statements of the 19th century and helped inspire an entire generation to become more aware of the world they lived in. During the turbulent times of the Vietnam War and race riots, this type of medium brought attention and emotion to the reaction and experiences of society. Without art education, students will not have as many opportunities to investigate art that challenges preconceived notions. This allows students to learn more than dates, statistics, and facts, but also to engage with subjects and think more critically about them. Through these art pieces, students can evaluate, learn, and interpret, and interpret the historical significance to society in their own lives. What I want you to really look at here, this is a very clear summative sentence that summarizes the ideas that he mentioned in this paragraph. He gives very specific examples and he doesn't simply throw the research out there and expect you to understand it. He does a really great job of explaining why that research matters and he incorporates his own ideas in the midst of the research. Please make sure that your paragraph is not completely bombarded by in-text citations. What happens when you do that is it means you're relying much more on your resource material than material that you have actually created. Um, this student did a particularly great job of ensuring that he used his own ideas amidst the research that he provided. Some critics argue that art education does not benefit students academically, so should have reduced funding, but research shows that arts improve student school and personal life. Again, we see a very clear topic sentence, and I want you to revisit right here where it talks about how it improves their cognitive ability. So we see that that paragraph, again, matches um, what he is introducing in this topic. Art education can be especially beneficial to younger adults, as multiple studies have concluded that activities such as drawing or playing an instrument can improve gross and fine motor function, language, mathematical, and decision-making skills. All of these are incredibly important in the development of, a ch of children's life and completely necessary for students to achieve academic success. Art education allows children to color, sketch, hold an instrument, and learn a beat. These basic building blocks build, their, build on their ability to write essays, count, or see patterns. This idea can be seen in older students and their level of academic success as students who participate in art three hours a day, three days a week for a full year or four times are more likely than their peers to be recognized for academic achievement. So by giving students better opportunities to engage in the arts, they will more likely be able to improve in their non-related art classes. Art education can also improve students' social skills and provide them with pl plenty of opportunities to make new friends. This is partially because music and art can activate the areas of the mind that are associated with empathy. So by putting students in scenarios where they're actively creating something together could encourage team building and the formation of friendships. The arts can also have a massive effect on student lives after school. In fact, multiple studies have shown that art and music can help reduce depression and, Im and improve the state of suffering from dementia. So by providing students with art education, it could cause them to develop a lifelong love of arts, which could help them later in life. Again, a really great summative sentence that's provided here. And again, just to reiterate, while he did use uh, various sources, he did a really great job of expanding on those sources with his own ideas. One of the biggest benefits of art education is to provide students the opportunity for economic growth. Again, a really well-rounded topic sentence. And if we go back to our thesis statement, we see that he mentions that as the final portion of his thesis. So the student did a really great job of just outlining the essay entirely um, in that introduction. In areas with lower income schools, dropout rates are around 22%, while students who are engaged in the arts at their schools have a drop rate of only 4%. This low dropout rate has contributed to greater economic prosperity later in life. In fact, students of lower income families who are more engaged in arts are 10% more likely to achieve gainful employment. If students are more engaged in the arts, they are more likely to gain scholarship in the arts, which will lower the financial burden of students who decide to attend college. 
Furthermore, job security can be directly related to the soft skills learned in art and music education classes. The ability to meet deadlines, work under pressure, following directions, and using listening skills are important skills for all jobs. Within our, our art education, there are opportunities to use these skills on a daily basis that become habitual skills for life. Art education offers students doors to education that they may not have otherwise had. Many students do not choose to be athletes and the arts gives them an avenue for scholarships and entrance into specialized school for their craft. Again, a really well-rounded summative sentence at this last paragraph. And then we take a look at the conclusion. Some of the most important skills to become a prosperous citizen can be found in the art classroom. From early education, students learn how to share crayons or mimic how to draw a snowman from their art teacher. They learn how to memorize songs, dance routines that become imperative in helping a young child's long-term memory to grow. As the students grow and continue in art education classes, they begin teamwork, meeting goals, and doing your best for a final audience. These soft skills allow students to become working adults who have gained skills that make them successful. Furthermore, understanding and studying art mediums gives students perspectives of society's history and empathy for change. Supporting these aspects of art education are vital for the growth of society. A reduction of funds in art education is limiting students' creative outlet and for some of their expression of identities. The future Rembrandts, Warhols, Octavia Spencers may be lost if art education is not more supported by society. What I want you to notice is that he, of course, does a really good job of regrouping your attention. He brings you back in. He has a really good transition. Of course, this is not a perfect essay. There are some issues. Uh, we see that he used second person right here. Um, where he's saying doing your best for a final audience. Uh, we see that there's a couple of comma slice issues earlier on in the essay. I'm not sure if any of y'all caught that as you were glancing through. Um, there was also some uh, possessive um, noun issues where he didn't put the apostrophe in the correct place. For example, right here, He's talking about a plural students in a plural term, but he's got the apostrophe before instead of after the S. So of course, uh, mechanically and as far as his editing skills, this is not perfect. However, when we look holistically at the essay and we see the really well-crafted topic sentence, um, the tone for the essay is really, really good. We see that he creates an argument without saying, I believe. I think, I know. Um, so we just see some really good skills that he's used throughout the essay to craft his argument. And then I want to draw your attention to the Works Cited page. Um, this should not have um, these quotation marks around it. It really should be like this. But then what I want you to pay attention to is we see that he really carefully uh, alphabetized this list it's all left aligned. And then we see that there's a hanging indention um, starting at the second line of each of these ideas. And then I wanna just bring your attention to a couple examples. We see right here, arts education navigator, arts integration in school. And then we see some names. Well, when you see the very first piece of information in each of these entries, and you go back and you take a look, that's exactly what he used in his in-text citation. Some of you on your compare and contrast, you were using uh, really random information like the dates or who published uh, the work when you should be using the first bit of information. Again, here's another example. And then at the top of the paper, we saw that he was using Leal, which was the last name of the author. Um, and again, I want you to see this connection. We see the last name here, and then we scroll down to the works cited, and we see right there that that's the last name. And for MLA format, if the author's name is available, then you use the last name. If there are page numbers, then you include the page numbers, but you do not put P or page or anything like that. So for example, um, if you have the author's last name, and page numbers, then your citation would look like this. If there's no author listed, 
then you would use the title of the article um, for that in-text citation. But that should be the only information listed. There's no need to do the date that it's published. There's no need to do the publicist name. Um, make sure that you are following proper MLA criteria. And then of course the period goes after the in-text citation and not before. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to link this article um, along with this YouTube video in hopes that you will view it before you turn in your final submission. And if you have any questions about anything that I covered in this lecture or the feedback that I will be leaving you by Monday, November 16th, I'll be glad to answer that. I hope you have a great day.